It began as a bit of a dream. In 2006, three men, UW medicine scientists, got to talking about the promise of stem cells to transform medicine. We thought that we might have the ability here in Seattle to change the world. They yeah. knew they couldn't do it alone. And it really be uh, came because of uh, UW Medicine's culture of collaboration. The idea that no single scientist or even a small group of scientists would be able to pull off uh, this, th the realization of the promise of stem cells, that you had to find ways to forge collaborations across teams of experts. Private donations were the only way. Generous donors bought into the dream and helped build it into the reality it is today. The Institute for Stem Cell and Regenerative Medicine, ISCRM, ice cream. That tends to be a very disarming sort of acronym, which I think immediately makes people think, oh, this sounds good, let's go get some. And that's exactly the sort of impression that we want them to, to go away with. It does sound good that stem cells can help the body regrow damaged tissues, that the process of regeneration found in certain organisms can be figured out and replicated in humans. So, so one example of regeneration in zebrafish is that if, if, if they lose a bit of their tail, i.e. like if some bigger fish comes by and bites off a piece of their tail, they can actually regenerate that and they can do so in the space of less than a week. And, and then if another bigger fish comes by, bites it off again, well, they can regenerate it again. And so, so studying this process of regeneration of the tail, I think, has given us great insights into regeneration in humans, mice, and other organisms. The same kind of regeneration that happens in these fish may soon cure things such as diabetes, paralysis, blindness, arthritis, heart failure, cancer, and more. Ice cream has been busy since opening in 2006, attracting the rock stars of the research world and leading the world in promising medical breakthroughs. What we're seeing here is a sheet of human cardiac muscle. We derived this from human embryonic stem cells and we taught them how to form the proper layers of the body and where to go left and where to go right and end up uh, being a nice dishful of beating heart muscle. The just published work from Dr. Chuck Murray and his team may ultimately provide the cure for heart failure. Billions of these cells were transplanted into the hearts of monkeys that had had heart attacks. Muscle grew back in their damaged heart walls. We grew part of a heart back and not only that, the part that we grew back connected electrically to the surrounding muscle and beat in synchrony. Testing this in humans could be just four years away. In another lab of ice cream, a gene therapy is being tested for a rare muscle disease that kills affected male babies before their first birthday. They're so weak that they can, can't breathe, so they have to have uh, mechanical ventilation. So without the uh, mechanical ventilation, of course, they, they, uh, they, they die. They succumb from, from respiratory weakness. A mutation of the disease was found in puppies. Those affected could barely sit up or walk. They eventually couldn't breathe and didn't survive beyond four months of age. But look at the puppies after given just one gene therapy treatment. They move normally. They run. They play. The puppies that were treated grew and survived to normal age. So it's not just treating symptoms. It's actually a cure for disease. Human trials for this potential cure could begin as early as 2015. Real hope for children who are hanging on. There's hope also for those who've become paralyzed. We're very excited about helping people, particularly who have, who are, uh, suffer from quadriplegia and have lost the use of their hands. Um, we think there's a couple of uh, exciting observations that we've made in animal model systems that are very close, we're working on getting them FDA approved, where we think we can improve hand function. And I, I believe we're already in, the, in uh, pretty advanced planning stages for a clinical trial in that regard. Research here shows an ability to turn genes on in paralyzed rats and restore upper body function. This affected rat can't use its right arm, but after spinal regeneration, it can. Testing in human quadriplegics to give them use of their hands again could happen within five years. 
Leukemia patients have already been helped by work done in the Quellos High Throughput Screening Corps. This lab allows researchers to test drugs, hundreds or thousands at a time, that may be most effective for an individual patient. Researcher Dr. Pam Becker was able to test an array of specific medications on leukemia cells taken from patients who were out of options. And she's basically giving these people a new lease on life because after undergoing this very targeted treatment, it actually did work and it drove their cancer basically into remission. The other core laboratories, the Garvey Cell Imaging Lab and the Ellison Stem Cell Core, give researchers access to powerful equipment and to each other. It's an environment in which these two are learning how stem cells can become functioning pancreatic cells that may someday do away with diabetes. You know, it's just to go to your, just across the hall uh, and, and find an, an investigator that has an expertise uh, complementary to yours. It's, it's invaluable, especially for a field like stem cell biology that is so young. Uh, you can achieve uh, what you wish to achieve uh, much faster and in a more productive way if uh, these efforts are uh, concerted with the under one roof. All that happens here is rooted in basic science. It's the foundation from which everything else bubbles up. Stem cells are amazing cells. Uh, however, it, clearly we can't quite control them, we can't quite use them in every situation as we would like to. Um, and that just means that we don't quite understand them yet. And how can we um, understand them? We need to do basic science, basic research. We have to discover. And we, how do you discover? You explore. You go, you explore, you target, and, and new things come out. Yes, that one. The passion and collaboration have been community-wide. Every day you can see the donor names on our buildings and on the walls of the labs. But the true impact of these philanthropists is best seen in the exciting breakthroughs so far. It is crazy. It's almost science fiction. So much progress already. I feel like we're changing the world. So much promise of more to come. We're developing the future of medicine. I'm, I'm, I'm very excited about the work that's been done to date, but I'm that much more excited about the work that lies ahead. I think our best is yet to come.